One of the worst feelings in life is to wait. One of the worst feelings in life is to wait, especially when it comes to waiting on God. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you right now, you may feel like you're waiting on God. You prayed for something and you're, you're wondering, God, what's taking so long? God, are you even listening? Have you forgotten me? Do, do, do you not even care? You might be praying for who knows what. Maybe you're praying that God would um, heal you from migraines. Perhaps you're asking God to bring a loved one to Christ. You might be praying that God would give you a job with real benefits to help you provide for your family. You might ask God to heal you from uh, depression or to save your hurting marriage or for God to bring you a spouse. And yet the more you pray, the less you see. You're probably praying on something, having faith for something, believing for something, and yet you've got no word from God. You've got no sign that He heard you, no sign that He's active, no sign that He cares. All you want is some answer, any answer. Give me a sign, God, give me a feeling, give me anything. And yet for some of you, there's nothing at all. What is God doing while we're waiting? Why does God feel so silent? I wanna remind you, that just because God feels silent doesn't mean He's absent. God is working. While you're waiting, while you're wondering behind the scenes, the goodness of God, the power of God, the provision of God, the grace of God, He's always working. He's always working. He's working in all things to bring about good. He loves you. He's a good father. He has good plans for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. Just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean He's not doing anything. What is God doing while you're waiting? God is always working even while we're waiting. We all have things that we're waiting for, a dream to come to pass, problem to turn around, to meet the right person. When it's taking longer than we thought, it's easy to get discouraged, to become impatient, and think, when is it ever going to happen? But sometimes it's not happening because we're not prepared for what God has prepared. You're ready for what you have in mind, but if you could see what God has in mind, you would realize you couldn't handle it right now. You need more time to grow, to develop, to gain experience. And the scripture says, let patience have its perfect work. Patience is developed in the weight room. You may not see anything changing, but something is happening. Patience is working. Your spiritual muscles are getting stronger. You're growing developing patience is building you getting you prepared so you can sustain what god has coming don't discount the waiting periods don't get discouraged because it's not happening as fast as you would like the longer it takes that means the more god has in store when it's your time when he knows you're ready what you give birth to is going to be much bigger than you've imagined We don't live in a culture today where people are willing to be patient and wait uh, on God to work in his time frame. God has a reason and when he doesn't move as quickly as you want him to move, there's a reason why God doesn't move as rapidly as you want him to move. That waiting on the Lord is a good thing and, and, and keeping that hope and keeping that expectation and looking for God to work it and staying bound and connected to him and in other words not backslide, not sliding into your own way, not taking matters into your own hands because that's what most people do when they're waiting and God doesn't move quick enough they take matters into their own hands and that makes your situation even worse than it already was waiting patiently means that I'm, I'm, I'm going to have an attitude of hope and expectation. I'm determined to stay connected to the Lord. I'm not going to backslide. I'm not going to get tired of waiting. I'm not going to cuss God out. I'm not going to walk away. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to get weary. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm just going to sit right here because I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to do something. I'm not going to quit. I'm expecting him to work it out. We are like patients in a hospital calling the doctor for advice on how to treat the patient. What do you do as a patient when you call the doctor? You're not telling the doctor what to do. You're waiting on the doctor to tell you what to do. 
Most often when we feel like God is doing nothing, y'all, he is crafting chapter after chapter with the story of your life. That he's fully engaged and fully invested in the details of all of our everyday living. He is never not doing nothing. We never grow spiritually when everything in our life is just the way we want it to be. I mean, you can learn something, but you still don't really know it if it's just in your head and hasn't been worked into your life yet. The only way you ever know what you really believe is to have it put to the test. We can sing about trusting God and we can talk about trusting God, but not one of you really knows whether or not you trust God until something happens that makes absolutely no sense in your life and you, you, you feel like it's very unjust and not right and you can't get any answers from God and you don't feel like he's anywhere in the neighborhood and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. That's when you find out if you really trust God. He wants us to believe him, to trust him, to wait on him with a good attitude. As long as you're believing, God is working. And I'll tell you what we need to be saying more of, and I've, I've, I've been doing this for a good number of years, and it's really, really helpful. When I'm waiting on something, and then I start to think about how long it's been, and you know, my mind starts to go negative, I say out loud, God is working. God is working, and it helps me, because he is. You know, when you get a breakthrough, God didn't start just working on that a second before you got it. God's working in your life right now. He's heard your prayers. He's working in your situation. But especially when you've prayed prayers for other people, you have no control over how long it takes them to listen to God. Faith is for when you don't see anything, when it doesn't feel good when you have questions that you're not getting answers to. And faith is a matter of the heart. Faith can believe that God is working and that something good is going to happen when everything around them looks the exact opposite. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I believe God. I believe God's working. Something good is gonna to happen to me. This is going to change. And I don't know how long you will have to wait, but I do know that God will come through. And I do know that you can enjoy your wait if you will just improve your attitude. Now do your part and wait with a good attitude. Not upset, complaining. When is it ever going to happen? No, turn it around. Father, thank you that what you started in my life, you will finish. Thank you that what you promised is on the way. If you will wait with the right attitude after patience has done its work, you're going to see promises come to pass. But we see waiting as negative. We don't like it. Nothing is happening. We're interested in the destination, but God is interested in the journey. He's working on us along the way. When we understand that waiting doesn't mean nothing is happening, doesn't mean God has forgotten about us. It's all a part of the process. Then we can stay in faith, knowing that at the right time, God will get us to where we're supposed to be. David waited 13 years to take the throne after the prophet Samuel anointed him to be the next king. God could have taken him straight to the throne, but David wasn't ready. He had to go through a time of testing. During those 13 years, he faithfully took care of his father's sheep. It seemed like a menial position. He knew he had bigger things in him. He had heard the prophet say that he was a king. But had David not passed the test in the weight room, he would have never made it to the throne. He had to show God he would take care of his father's sheep before God would trust him to take care of his sheep, the people of Israel. While you wait, be your best where you are. That's a very important time. God is watching to see if you're ready. And here's the key. If what you're praying about isn't changing, then God is using that situation to change you. If it's not working out, 
then it's working out something in you. All things are working for your good. God is working in your life. I'm telling you, if you have prayed a prayer in faith that is according to the will of God, God is working. Sometimes in hindsight, you see more of the why behind the wait. I'm gonna to talk to somebody here because right now you don't see it. But years from now, you may look back and say, oh wow, well I'm glad he didn't or I'm glad he did. Sometimes in hindsight, you can see the why behind the wait. When we look back, we can see exactly why God waited for the perfect time. His ways are always good. Just because God feels silent doesn't mean he's absent. Whenever you're waiting, remember, our God is working. And one reason we get in a hurry is we think we're falling behind. Our friend is getting married. Our coworker got promoted. The neighbors moved into a new house. We got to make things happen. We're being left out. Well, here's the key. What has your name on it will not go to anyone else. What belongs to you will not go to another person. David was out in the shepherd's fields when the prophet Samuel came to his house to anoint one of the sons as the next king. David's father, Jesse, didn't even bring David in. He thought there's no way it's David, he's too young. When Samuel went to pour the oil on the other seven sons, the oil wouldn't flow. God was showing us no matter how hard someone tries to get what's yours, they may manipulate, connive, ignore, leave you out. The oil is not going to flow to them. What has your name on it is coming your way. The person, the job, the house, the opportunity, the promotion cannot go to anyone else. That's why we don't have to live jealous or envious of other people. Well, Joel, my coworker got the promotion that I worked so hard for. They played politics. It wasn't fair. If it was supposed to be yours, you would have it. Stay in the weight room. Keep a good attitude. Keep growing. Keep passing the test. What God has for you is on the way. The reason it's taking longer is because it's much bigger, much more rewarding than you thought. When you see what God did, you'll say, it was worth the wait. When you see the person God brings into your life, somebody better than you've dreamed, you'll say, it was worth the wait. Psalm 37 says, don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Travel steady along his path. He will honor you and give you the land. When you're faithful in the weight room, when you don't get impatient, you don't get frustrated by closed doors, you don't live jealous of others, because you're traveling steady, honoring God, He will give you the land. That means you don't have to make things happen in your own strength. You don't have to manipulate people, try to force the doors to open. God will give you the position, give you the spouse. Now my challenge, don't be impatient for God to act. Don't be discouraged by what's not happening. God is working. 